This video is meant to help you understand how to use the T-star multiplier table. If you remember, we've talked about how this new confidence interval for one population mean requires the use of the T-distribution because we have more estimation and the T-distribution accounts for that. So we talked about how there are actually an infinite number of curves depending on their degrees of freedom. So this table is meant to help you look up what the multiplier would be for your given curve and your desired confidence level. So it's pretty straightforward to use. You'll notice that the degrees of freedom are shown on the left-hand side of the table, and then the confidence level is shown at the top. So if you are looking for the multiplier for 10 degrees of freedom, with a 90% confidence level, you would just find the intersection between the two. So remember that degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so the sample size minus 1. So the one thing about this table is that it will require you actually calculate degrees of freedom before you use it. Another thing to mention is that when you get further towards the bottom of the table, You'll notice that the values go from 30 to 40 to 50, etc. So as a statistician, your goal is to be more conservative. So if you are in between degrees of freedom, so let's say, for example, I have 38 degrees of freedom, I actually would go down to the smaller degree of freedom, so 30, to be more conservative. So don't round up. You would move down in degrees of freedom if you're in between. So again, if I had 78 degrees of freedom, instead of using 80, I would use the 70 row. So a couple other things to notice. When you use the T-star table, as you increase your confidence level, your multiplier will increase. And that happens because if you want to be more confident, you need more room in your confidence interval. So essentially, you need a larger multiplier. Also, you'll notice that as you increase in degrees of freedom, your multiplier will become smaller. And that happens because you're losing area in the tails of the curve and gaining it in the height of it. So again, to find a multiplier, you would just take your degree of freedom and then find the intersection between that row and your confidence level column.